Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Learn StarCraft. We're going to learn Zerg vs. Terran openings right now, but not before I quench my thirst again. If you're a Zerg player, you might be thinking that you don't need to watch the Terran vs. Zerg opening videos. You're wrong. Go watch the Terran vs. Zerg openers that I just finished recording, or if you're watching on YouTube, it should be the previous one in the playlist. It's very important to note that as a Zerg player, you are answering Terran. Zergs really don't have a lot of choices in terms of how they elect to open. We're going to focus on the big broad strokes of the Terran vs. Zerg matchup um, from the Zerg point of view. But I want to stress, the Terran player is going to be pressuring you at his uh, choice. The Terran player is going to be choosing to rush for Marine Medic and attack you or build up with five racks and then pressure you. You don't have that much variety at that point in the game. We'll see the ways in which you will get some choice there, but the important thing is that you are trying to exploit things at a smaller scale. You're trying to find tactical positions that are weak. You're trying to identify exactly what your opponent is doing. You're trying to get up those expansions. It's in the mid game and later where there's a lot more tactical freedom and so on and so forth. So we're gonna look at this idea of Gross, excuse me. We're going to leave this idea of Terran's really setting the pace in the matchup um, as we go through things from the Zerg perspective. But once again, I want to stress that the Zerg player, um, or excuse me, I want to stress that the, 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 what the hell did I want to stress? Oh, yeah, I remember. I want to stress that build orders are the specific sequence of exactly when things are built. And openers are the general broad strokes, the skeleton, the through line of what's happening. And we're talking about openers today. We'll mention little bits about build orders here and there, but we're specifically going to look at the Zerg versus Terran in phases one, two, and then leading into three. So um, early game is where build up is happening. We're gonna look at a lot of important ways in which Zerg is building up and how not to screw this up by overly building Zerglings. We're gonna look at how to deflect early pressure, again, without building too many non-drone units, and set ourselves up. And to do so, I wanna look at the canonical Zerg vs. Terran opening. This is just the most basic way you could ever open. We got Jadong versus Innovation. We've looked at this game several times before, and we're going to look at some of the absolutely key things in this matchup. First of all, Zerg wants lots of drones and wants lots of bases, wants lots, 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 lots of them. And so building drones and finding times to build drones is really the number one question for a Zerg player for the first 10 minutes of the game. One of the things that Zerg players learned almost immediately is that Zerg has no threats, or, or excuse me, Terran has no threats early on except for a bunker rush. Marines just die way too easily before they have medics, before they have stim, before they have range. So Zerg players learn that you can do this expand on 12 supply while sending out a scouting drone to just check up to see if maybe there's a bunker rush coming. And then Zerg players typically build a spawning pool immediately thereafter. Here Jadong builds one more drone and then builds a spawning pool. Again, those are slightly different build orders. The f this one that we're seeing is 12 hatchery, 12 spawning pool. Um, uh, the more common one is 12 hatchery, 11 spawning pool, but note that these are the same opening, okay? This is the same opening. They have slightly different build orders, but the opening, the broad strokes are the exact same. The Zerg player, after trying to get that spawning pool up very quickly, is then going to save up for a third hatchery. Jadong's going for, it looks like, a 14 or 15 hatch, something thereabouts. But the most common one is 12 hatchery at expansion, 11 spawning pool, and then 13 hatchery in the main base. What did that drone do? What did that drone do? This is the most messed up point in the early uh, Zerg vs. Terran opening. Understanding this moment just skyrocketed my ability to win. You gotta understand this, dude. You, you got, you just, you need to get this. There are really three different things that Terran can be doing at the start of the game. He can be early expanding after one barracks. Great. 
cool, a no pressure situation. Or the Terran can be getting a fast refinery, which will delay that expansion, but have vulture pressure or wraith pressure coming up. Ooh. Or Terran can be doing an outdated, but still very real threat of going like two barracks in one base. What you're trying to scout for at the start of the game is, is he going for this early expansion? Because if he is, what do we know about Marines? Until medics and stim and range, they suck. They're bad. They're not good units. They suck. So in this circumstance, we got to be building up super hard. If he is going for that early ref uh, refinery to pressure, or if he is building a second barracks in your main base, you got to build a few more drones because you're going to need to build some defenses. Okay? Does that make sense? You're basically looking for, is he one barracks expanding? Because if he is, you can just build a geyser right away, man. You can start tech into a layer right away. You can do all these things right away because you're not going to be under pressure. He's going one barracks and then expand. Dude, he's no way that he can pressure you. But if he's doing the other two, if he's building the two barracks or if he's building the refinery, which will let him build a factory, then you got to build a few more drones. We'll see that happen later. We'll see that happen later. But Jadong scouts this, so he does the normal thing, which is you build a hatchery, and then you immediately build a geyser. Okay, this is normal. Zerg is the one responding to what Terran's doing, more or less. Zerg, or Terran is the one dictating things. So, appreciate how no Zerglings will really get made. It's basically one set of Zerglings, or more commonly, two set of Zerglings. Everything else is drones, right? It's just drones. We'll look at future games where Terran will be going for pressure builds, and we'll look at how this changes what Zerg's doing. But if you're up against the 90, 95% of the time where that Terran player wants to just get an early expansion up, it's drones. Look at this, drones. First set of gas you get, the layer. You can see it up in the production tab up here. See this? Do -do 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 -do. The layer. Um, very common. Very common. You just actually that's the 95% case for Zerg. Zerg will spend his initial gas on the layer. Great. Um, also another very common timing. When do you get this second extractor? Typically it's between 22 and 24 supply. So that way you can get up enough gas for mutalisks. See, look at that, 21 or 26. That means he built the extractor when he was at 22 supply. What does Zerg do with his next set of gas? He gets Zergling speed. So typical, nothing but drones getting built. Drones, 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 drones. Until right about now. Let me, let me pull a Todd and say, look at the supply. The hardest thing to understand about Zerg build orders is that it is less about when the major structures are built. That's what we were talking about with Terran. When is the depot built? When is the barracks built? When's the refinery built, right? Because you're always building SCVs out of the command center. You're always building Marines out of the barracks. So you're just always doing those things. There's not even a choice there. Build orders for Zerg are about when you start and stop building drones. So we have only built drones outside of those two sets of Zerglings. Right around this moment in time, see where you're at 25 and 27? Right around there as you're getting close to 27 out of 27, build like four-ish more sets of Zerglings. You just want a, a dash more Zerglings. Look at him, he's at 27 to 35. Here's one set, two sets, three sets, four sets, and then back to drones again. Great, Spire's getting produced. What the hell was that about? Whoa! Why Why is Why is Jadong just building these four sets? Getting these extra Zerglings brings you to like 10 or 12. It's like almost a full control group. This is basically a nice way to continue to contain. If you have three Zerglings, he just starts to push out with his Marines and you can't pressure him back. But if you show that you have a few more Zerglings, he really has to wait for medics. And look at the production tab. An academy is, it's almost done, but it's still in production. There's 
You're also probably noticing I'm a Zerg player right now. I'm able to give a lot more detailed explanation from the Zerg side of things, but it's still, it's still relatively simple. All you're really doing here is getting the spire the instant the layer is done and just building drones except for this one period of time you want to dash some lings in here cement this in your mind right now basically no more lings for the rest of this video which is eight minutes long okay <laughs> look at the drones getting built drones getting built drones getting built it's really important to make those drones getting built drones getting built these 12 zerglings is a nice time to build them it does things like contain it does things like help us maybe do some counterattacking. maybe do some pressure cool 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 duper 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 but we're not gonna be building zerglings for the rest of the game so of course seems good so when your spire is about halfway done we see it's just past halfway done you stop building stuff so you can get out your mutalisks. Again, a huge key piece of Zerg build orders is knowing when to start and stop building things. Jadong does a counterattack with these Zerglings. You don't have to do this shit. It's fine. You can just ignore that stuff. Um, the only way that you are going to defend early pressure is with mutalisks and sunken colonies. We're going to go a little deeper into the game with Zerg, so that way we can see how Zerg gets to mid-game from these openings. Right when the spire is done, let's just take a moment and appreciate the spire finishes right now. Why does Zerg tend to go 12 hatch, 11 pool, 13 hatch, 12 gas, 22 gas, and only build drones except for Zerglings at that time? Why is this the common style? Well, we've got a bunch of drones and look at our money. We are right at the point where we can build nine mutalisks exactly. Isn't that nice? Isn't that great? Nine mutalisks exactly. That's why these timings are very, very um, important. And frankly, they're just not hard to hit, right? You just, you scout them going for an expansion, then you just do these timings and boom, you get nine mutalisks out. Part of why I don't like to do those Zergling counterattacks is because of this situation that Jadong winds up in. If you have 10 Zerglings, you just surround that and kill it off. We just saw a video in the Terran vs. Zerg um, openings where Terran got annihilated just because there were a handful of Zerglings there. But we're now going to see yet again the next steps of the Zerg opening. And they are as follows. Get a third base. Get a Hydra Den for Lurkers and get a queen's nest for the hive. This game is going to be the traditional style of Zerg, which is you go for this Hydralisk den here, which is lurkers. You use the mutalisks to delay, deny, mess with Terran as much as possible. But instead of the queen's nest, the ultra traditional style is the evolution chamber to get the upgrade started early. Once upon a time, Zerg players, the theory for Zerg was, we know that our mutalisks will be good at harassing and delaying. We know that lurkers just can easily defend against marines. But Terran will get scary when he has marines and tanks and vessels. The vessels see the lurkers, the tanks shoot the lurkers uh, with siege mode, and the lurkers can't mess with the marines. So. How do I, the Zerg player, deal with a marine tank vessel army? How do I fight against that? The prevailing theory was you get this plus one carapace upgrade for your units. And that is what makes you sturdy enough to fight against the Terran army toe to toe. Uh, the modern style is, fuck no it isn't, rush for defilers. <laughs> we'll, we'll see that here today. We'll see that here today. Um, but... This is, this is the traditional style. This actually works fine. It actually works fine to do this style. But let's also appreciate what's being built. Drones, 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 drones. Only drones, all drones, building drones. Yeah, we spend a little bit of our larva on hydralisks because you can't form lurkers out of thin air. But you know what we're doing outside of that? Drones, 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 drones. Drones, 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 drones. Look at the production tab. It's hydras and drones. Plus one carapace because the traditional thought process is, hey, we should use upgrades to delay. 
And you know what your mutalists are doing in the meantime? Looking for opportunities like this, where some marines and medics get isolated so you can keep those numbers small. This was the traditional Zerg theory. Hydras and drones, hydras and drones. Hydras, why? Because they morph into lurkers. Drones, why? Because we're Zerg, damn it. We want to get all the economy in the world. Num, 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 num. Num, 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 num. And then following this, we will look at the queen's nest. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, just let the rest of this video play. How much longer is it? All right, it's only about one minute longer. And so you're, you're seeing that it's basically drone at the start in order to get mutalisks. And then you get hydralisks, but you just keep droning using mutas and lurkers. Great, muta lurker, muta lurker, and then defiler, boom. And then we're seeing um, more more mid-game pieces come up from Zerg. The mid-game pieces for Zerg is a hive defilers, extra hatcheries like this one being built in the base, and this evolution chamber researching. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Hydralisks and drones. Only just now. Look at this. Only just now. Ten minutes into the game, now we're building Zerglings again. You know how many Zerglings we built before then? Just those starting few sets at the beginning of the game. Boom, boom, ba-doom, boom, boom. Our mutalists are sure being obnoxious still, but we do have a base up. That's pretty tight. There's one last piece that's missing for Zerg for the mid game, other than Defilers. Defiler's gonna come down right now. Think what's missing, what's missing, what's missing. There's a Defiler, what's missing, what's missing? What is missing? The answer is the Nidus Canal. We want the Nidus Canal to connect that third base. By the way, see this? This was how old school Zerg's defended attacks was to get very fortunate angles. Where you have your mutalisks coming in and then you just pick off the vessel. Kill off all the ground army when the stuff's on siege and this buys you time for the defiler. Still completely fine. Still completely fine today. And I want to stress something. Why, why is it that that has fallen a little out of fashion? Let me see if I can find this. Where is the... Hold on, I, I lost this video. Where is the... Lurker surround. I think, I think this is it. I think this is the lurker on each thing. Um, where's... Uh, oh, here we go. Here's the video. We might ask ourselves the question, why is it that Zerg players kind of fell out of fashion with that particular style. If I can open up my playlist and drag this video open, I'll be thrilled to show you. Zerg mess up, great. We looked at this video in core Zerg vs. Terran strategy, where uh, a lot of Zerg players used to defend with this kind of style, where if there's a bunch of tank marine, no problem, I'll just use my lurker and zergling to delay until I think there's maybe a good timing to attack. And if you mess up once a Zerg, you lose the game immediately. You lose the game immediately if you mess up one time as Zerg. See, like here, if I mess up my Zergling control just once, I got no units. It's going to take an extremely long time to rebuild. Not good, right? Not good. So this is why in this ultra standard traditional style, um, this has sort of slowly fallen out of favor, these types of big defenses like this, just because they feel risky, they feel risky. So I want to look at uh, the same sort of question that I asked in the Terran vs. Zerg uh, openings. What are some variations to this? Here is Hero versus Light. Uh, the same ultra-aggressive player that we were talking about before. He's under the name Eros Deck. Because top players are... I don't know. I guess if you're that good, you can name yourself any silly old thing and you sound kind of cool. Let's look at Hero choosing... Oh! No, wait. I think... This is Nada. I'm sorry. This is... Is this Nada? I think this is Nada. I think this is actually Nada. This is either Nada or Light. I'm sorry, I've watched so many games. It doesn't even matter. We're going to see Hero, the Zerg player, make a choice. 
Here is one example of how you can choose to be annoying and aggressive versus a Terran player. 12 hatchery, 11 pool, builds up to 13. See how it says 13 to 17 up there? Boom, there's 13. Hatch, immediately followed by 12 extractor. Drones getting built. What is the standard thing that Zerg players do? Well, with their first 100 gas, they get a layer. That's the standard thing. But look at that. The SCV gets pushed out. The SCV gets pushed out. So, see, look at this. 164, 96, just enough to build a layer once this next next uh, gas thing comes in. But instead, boom, zergling speed. And then look at the production tab. Lots of zerglings are going to get made. Zerglings, zerglings, zerglings. Jerglin, jerglin, jerglin. So many zerglings. The layer is what is constructed with the next pile of gas. Gaze upon the minimap. You see there's that yellow dot on the minimap. That is the scouting SCV for Terran. Uh, for purple here, for hero. He's just flooding with zerglings and trying to deny that scout from coming in. But as with any opening, we need to ask ourselves the question of Zerg, how do I peel back to something normal? So Hero builds up until he ha he's at about 27 or 27 supply, and then he just goes right back to droning again. So I actually highlight this, look at that, right back to droning again. You, you may have heard me say, you gotta not really all in as Zerg because if Terran knows what they're doing, they do stuff like this. Remember that Supply Depot that we saw Flash build, the Supply Depot we saw Innovation build in the Terran vs. Zerg openings video? This is why. Watch these Zerglings get owned. That wasn't close. That wasn't close at all. Oof. Well, how does our Zerg hero return back to something normal? He just keeps building drones. He has his second extractor done. What should his next steps be? Well, he's going to use mutilisks and sunken colonies to stay alive. He can maybe mess with the Terran player using some zerglings. But notice how thematically similar this is to the last game. Mutus, sunkens to stay alive. And what we're going to see here is the more modern version of how Terran vs. Zerg works. Uh, or excuse me, how Zerg vs. Terran works. We're going to see the more modern style of rushing for defilers. Mutal is still coming up, so Hero can mess around a little bit with Terran. Most Zergs absolutely do not do this attempted big ling all-in that um, Hero did. But, you know, here's the Hydralisk Den. We get some Mutalisks. Go! Look, before the Hydralisk Den is even done, Queen's Nest goes down. This is the modern style. Screw playing coyly with a bunch of lurkers and defenses burrowing and unburrowing. No, hell no, I'm rushing for the defiler, man. So the mutalisks are just harassing, trying to find opportunities, pushing Terran back. Lurkers get started, and the very nanosecond that this queen's nest is done, boop, hive. Down in the bottom right, ooh, expansion, boop. Pulling back to a normal mid-game look. So, you can completely imagine being Zerg, doing a normal opening with just a few Zerglings. With no Zergling huge attempted insta-win play. Getting the Mutalisks, and then doing exactly this. It's, oh yeah, look at that, there's the Evolution Chamber. It's happening a little later. It looks like we're going to get the um, Carapace upgrade second and the Hive first, but then look at that. Evo Chamber started, Hive done, Defiler Mound instantly begun, and the one piece that is missing from our Zerg player, you may have guessed it, we said this last time, is the Nidus, the Nidus, the Nidus, and there it is. Great. Now, pause and look at the minimap. See that yellow blob that is beginning to move out? This is the attempt for Terran to um, do some damage, to do a push, to do some pressuring. And the hive is done. Defilers are about to be able to get started. So Hero should be able to 
relatively easily defend this. Let's look at another different opening from Zerg to explain a little bit about why um, some Zergs still do some different openings. We have Larva, uh, who recently got fourth place in ASL4, and just a spectacular Zerg player. Very good at doing these late game, big, long, masterful matches. He's playing up against Last, who again is the second best Terran in the world after Flash. And look at this, this is a nine pool. Zerg has built the spawning pool before building any Overlord. This is a very fast pool. But remember, this is not the cheese video. This is the openings video. So we see uh, this is going to turn into normal play. How does Larva do that? Well, he builds the pool on 9. He builds a drone. He then builds an extractor to build a 10th drone and then cancel the extractor, yielding himself at 10 out of 9. Why? So we can have the maximum amount of drones at the start of the game. And Overlord is then built next. And Zerg is sending a drone here. Why? Because he wants to know where to send these Zerglings. Overlord finishes. Three sets of Lings started, so there are six total. But then watch. Hatchery. And th this next larva, what's it going to be? It's going to be a drone. Why? Why, why, why would we ever do this? Well, we looked at the eight barracks nine supply depot build order and opening from Terran in the Terran vs Zerg opening video and we showed that if you build a barracks that early you actually hit Zerg before Zerg can even build any Zerglings. If you go nine pool which is a opening that is pretty reasonable on four player maps last got quite lucky and last scouted um, the uh, Zerg player first. So now Last knows exactly this is coming, but look at Last Barracks. He doesn't even have one Marine finished. Now, in case you didn't know, one Zergling beats one Marine in a one-on-one. -on -one. Marines get better the larger their numbers become because then you can do massive sprays of damage before the Zerglings can even get there. And let's, let's not kid ourselves, Zergling pathing when you have 40 Zerglings going in ain't the hottest. So you can often just auto win. Let's look at how Larva follows this up. Well, in the main base, we got 10 drones of mining. There's another drone, there's another drone. This is not an all in. This is not Larva's attempt to just close this game out. Watch how, watch how sexy this defense is from last. This is, this is hot. Four SCVs in a diamond formation so that the Zerglings have to attack this front one and the other three of the diamond can then repair that one, leaving these two Marines that are behind complete and total freedom to shoot at the Zerglings. If there were no SCVs here, those Zerglings wander up the ramp, kill the Marines, game's done. Zerg picks off an SCV. You know what? Hey, there's a third hatchery. Wait, right after the third hatchery, the extractor got started, just like in our previous games. And then here we see drones continuing to get produced. You know, what's going to happen with the first 100 gas? Well, you know, it's going to be a layer. What's going to happen with the next 100 gas? Well, it's going to be zergling speed. Ugh. When did the uh, extractor get started, the expansion? Right around 23-ish supply which is the standard of standards what's this drone doing is he idle goodness no larva's too good for that he's preparing his life's future he applied to spire school he just got admitted he's going to grow up big and strong and be a spire so if you were to hop into this game right now you didn't look at the clock you just glanced at what the game status was you might say oh yeah no it looks like uh, zerg went for a 12 hatch 11 pool opening this is the beauty of strong play. This is why I don't want you to get obsessed with early wins. I want you to get obsessed with maybe an early play that flows back into something standard looking, such as this gorgeous return move by Larva. In actuality, he's, he's a little behind. He's a little behind where he would normally be, but that's fine. Notice it's only drones that's been made. Only drones. After those initial six Zerglings, only drones. Only drones, only drones, only drones. Only drones. 
at this point in time, Larva has a lot of options in order to uh, um, how he wants to transition. I want to talk a little bit about Zerg all-ins and why I don't recommend doing them. This, as much as it pains me to say, this is July Zerg. One of my favorite players of all time. He's the god of war. He is the, he's just a battler, man. Uh, to call him aggressive would be an understatement. I mean, he just, he just, he just attacks, 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 attacks. This is going to be an all-in build from uh, July versus Last, who's excellent. Now, let me tell you what Last is going to do. One barracks expand into two barracks into a third barracks with an upgrade. Right? The, just the penultimate standard. I don't know why I keep saying penultimate. It should be the ultimate standard. I just like the word penultimate, man. Fuck it. Here's what uh, we see out of July. July goes for 12 hatch. Looks normal. Oh, interesting. Look at this. A gas geyser. Next. And then a spawning pool. Huh. I wonder why. This is a style uh, of two hatch play that, once again, I, I don't recommend at all. What July is going to do is he's going to spend his first gas that he can getting layer, but because he got such an early gas geyser, he can get zergling speed almost on the heels of that. So his layer, and look at that, zergling speed start at almost the same time. Now, in order to make sure that this all-in works successfully, here's the first set of four zerglings, and you know what's being built on the backside? More zerglings. More zerglings, more zerglings, more zerglings. Zergling, 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 zergling. Good Terran players are very good at continually hurling SCVs out there as scout. When the layer is halfway done, Zerg starts. Yep, see, there's the SCV. If you're up against a good player, this is essentially always going to get into your base. Always. It's always going to get in there. Why? You don't have Zergling speed yet. What if you block the ramp? Well, first of all, what we're going to see on Thursday when I show worker scouting and micro tricks, it's virtually impossible to block the ramp from proper worker scouting. But this worker, even if it couldn't get up the ramp, it could still go straight to the natural expansion and go, holy shit, there's no drones here. Holy shit, there's no gas geyser being started. So getting scouted when you're going all in, uh, it pretty much always happens. Layer halfway done, you start the hydralisk den so that the layer and the hydralisk den finish simultaneously so you can start lurkers immediately. Time for water. Lots of zerglings piling up. There's not even a finished academy for Terran. Ooh, gosh, golly, geez, ow, this is looking bad for Terran. Watch how simply and deftly Terran handles this. If you do this on the ladder, you'll get some wins. I was doing cheesy shit like this when SCR came out, and man, no one knows how to hold this stuff off because it's not a good build. Watch, look at this. Three lurkers. Look at the look at the power, and there's all these zerglings. There's almost looks like two, maybe a third control group of zerglings coming. Holy shit! Wah, wah, oh! Step one for Terran. Terran walks himself forward with his marine medic. Just walks forward. If there's lurkers, Terran's gonna walk backwards, no problem. But walks forwards and starts a bunker. Look at this SCV. He just starts a bunker. Picking off Zergens that he can. He's just going to sit here. He's just going to wait. Here come the lurkers. Here come the lurkers. Zerg, Zerg seems to have a really good flank on all sides. Look at this. Terran has built a line of bunkers extending out. You heard me say in the very first video that we were looking at, the very first opening play, that the, the big element of Zerg build orders it's different from the other two races is when you're starting building drones and when you're stopping building drones. These types of all-ins can win and they can make you feel very powerful, but you have built those units in sacrifice of building drones. So we have one drone mining at the expansion. There he is. In the main base we have eight drones mining minerals because one of them had to be turned into a hydralisk den. And Terran, who still got the opportunity to build SCVs this entire time, crushed it. She crushed it. So this is this is a little bit of the danger of trying to do all-ins. Um, 
I think that the important thing is doing builds that are more like what you're seeing Larva do here, where he opens with a nine pool and then transitions back into something normal looking, where it starts with a nine pool, but by the time I've moved forward several minutes, ugh, it just looks like any old Zerg. It just looks like any old Zerg. And I think that the hard part of playing Zerg is when things like bunker rushes happen. Things like the super aggressive styles happen. We looked in the Terran vs. Zerg opening at Terrans doing bunker, or excuse me, barracks first openings and messing with Zerg. How the hell does Zerg stabilize there? We looked at some weird fast gas with drops and vultures and wraiths. How does Zerg deal with that? Well, don't worry. Let's take a look. Here is the barracks on 8, followed by Supply Depot on 9. This is another game between Larva and Last. Let's take a look at what Larva does. There's a reason why 12 hatchery, 11 pool is the standard. And those numbers are exact. There's a big reason why those are standard. It's because it gives you just enough time to hold off these types of bunker rushes. So notice that first drone did march his way outward, right as the expansion happened. Drone goes the opposite direction that the Overlord goes. Look at the Overlord on the minimap. Blam, sees that uh, good old barracks. You know, we're not going to visually go there, I don't think. Maybe we will. Wow, damn. Day 9's good. Look at that. So now we have an expansion to defend. Watch the calm grace with which Larva deflects this attack. Um, the, how many drones should you pull? It's proportional to how many SCVs need to be pulled. Generally, if there are a lot of SCVs coming out, Nine. Nine is the right number of drones to pull. Nine. But otherwise, six, seven, eight, something in that range. I like seven, if it seems to be one of these light pressures. And these um, these drones, they're just going for the marines here. When drones get weak, pull them back. This is a very micro-testing type of defense, but if you get good at it, awesome. Now, a lot of people will look at this and go, why the hell is the bunker there? Why the hell is the bunker not by the hatchery? Because look at how well Larva's microing. You build this here so that you can build a second bunker here and have a bunker to retreat to. This is the start of the bunker push, the bunker pressure at the beginning of the game. Remember, Terran's just trying to mess with Zerg early on and pick off drones. So this is why uh, Terran's willing to build it in this far back awkward spot. But look at this. Just pulling back carefully, very calmly, retreating, leaves only the healthy drones. Just buying himself enough time to get this expansion up to build a creep colony. And there's the secondary bunker being built by last. More drones being uh, pulled. But these drones are not suiciding themselves in. I think I think Larva has lost zero or one drones right now. He's lost almost none. Look at just the calm elegance. I just think this is a beautiful defense. And now that those Zerglings are up, drones get the hell out of town. Sunken Colony finishes. And a very successfully defended bunker rush pressure thing. Biggest illusion if you're Zerg. Oh my gosh, Terran's way ahead. Holy cow. No, he's not. Look at the minimap. There is no command center done for for Terran. There is no expansion done for Terran. So what Zerg is doing is... Zerg is not going to wait for that third hatch to get started before building the extractor. But basically, what are you going to do as larva? You're going to try to return as quickly as you can to the typical path. We're going to get an extractor. We're going to get a third hatchery. We're going to build that second extractor at around 22, 23 supply at our natural expansion. Our first 100 gas is going to go to layer. Our next set of gas is going to uh, go to speed. And you can do little shenanigans like this if you're Zerg. you got some Zerglings left over. Maybe mess with the Terran. This is a hard wall off, as in Zerglings cannot slip through any of the cracks here. Drones, hey, there's a third ugh, hatchery getting planted down. Nice, cool. 
And Larva wrecks last in this game. This game was just, this was murder, man. This was not a close game at all. Um, sometimes you'll wind up in spots like this where you're a little uncomfy. You're floating some larva here. It's okay. It's okay. Just try to make sure that you are not building out of one hatchery, that you're sort of splitting back and forth between the two, so that way larva's still being generated. Larva accidentally sends his um, zerglings back through the bunker. But look at this. Extractor going down. Doesn't this look normal? Doesn't look so normal. It's at 23. I have 26 supply. Yeah, that looks that looks like a typical time. Great. All right, cool. So speeding things up a bit. We see the layer. Zergling speed is being built on the production tab. Layer finishes. Boom. Instantly constructing a spire. Uh, larva looks like last. Tried to get a little cheeky and bust in there with some marines to pick off the sunken colony, but larva just had two sunken colonies there, so no problem. Larva now can't really see what his opponent's doing, and how do we normally defend against Terran? Sunkens and Mutas, Sunkens and Mutas, Sunkens and Mutas, Sunkens and Mutas. What's this drone doing, you think? If you're ever confused as to what a player's doing, ask how it relates to the mid game. Oh, I see, Larva's trying to sneak a drone around in order to get a third base. Because it's much less about strict build orders when you're Zerg, and much more about intelligently responding and getting to those big goal posts that you're trying to hit. After the Mutalisk, what do we do? It's a Hydralisk Den. Beautiful. Alright, you know what happens after Hydralisk Den? If you said Queen's Nest, you're pretty fucking smart, man. And so his harassment begins. Larva absolutely annihilates last with his micro this game. But we're going to ignore that. And soon enough comes the... The... Again, he's just annihilating last, like, so badly. Like, it is not close here, man. There are so many dudes getting killed here. But back home... Uh, there's still no third. That drone got picked off in the middle of the map. There's still no third. Okay. And the Queen's Nest. Okay, thank goodness. Um, again, this is this modern principle of I want to get defilers fast over anything else at all. Uh, there's there's one more adjustment that I'll note here that I think is uh, it was very hard to find any videos of this happening because this is like a 2017 style thing and all these replays are 2016 and 2015. Um, for a, a lot of Zerg players were like, oh my gosh, I got to rush for the defilers. How else am I going to defeat this giant Terran army? What a lot of Zergs are doing is overbuilding Mutalisks instead of stopping at nine or stopping at eleven. Here we see there's 10 Mutalisks here. A lot of Zergs are just continuing to build Mutalisks for long periods of time. We'll see a little bit of that in a moment, but other than that Larva, he's just moving Zerglings out to make sure that there's no cheeky fire bats chilling in expansion. He's getting his hive. What do you think he's gonna get next? An evolution chamber for Carapace, and then a Nidus network to connect to his third. He's gonna get some lurkers. Hey, look at those extra Mutalisks getting built. This is the style that Soul Key has been using to demolish Flash in many of their uh, fightings. Oh, this replay's a little long. I'm just gonna go ahead and just... Uh, and if you look at the mini-map, yeah, there's the Defilers, there's the Lurkers, and we're back to a normal Zerg-looking mini-game. Except Zerg is ahead of uh, Terran Supply because Larva absolutely stomped last face in that game. This is just an amazing game by Larva. Um, what I want to do is I want to talk about this game that we looked at from the Flash perspective of what if you're Zerg and you scout a Terran player going for fast gas? What do you change? You're going to see me talk about the most important juncture. Okay, Remember how there's this three different things the Terran can be doing at the start? Typical old one racks expand, fast gas openings, or two racks openings. We've been seeing, uh, okay, it looks like it's going to be 14, maybe is it 15 that we're going to see? No, it looks like it's going to be a 14 supply third hatchery for our Zerg player. Boop, there he goes. Now, look at this. 
Look at this. Look. Look. You heard me say that the most messed up, easy to screw up juncture for Zerg vs. Terran openings is understanding what to do differently versus ultra fast command centers or gas then expand or two racks something like that something non ultra fast command century look at how drones are being built after that third hatch if you're zerg and you're up against an ultra fast expansion command center from terran you gas right away here zero goes ooh damn i don't know what he's doing look at the mini map this drone that moved down here it scouted a wall off and there was no expansion on the other side of the wall off. So Zero doesn't know whether it's one base mass marine stuff. He doesn't know if it's one base fast factory. But he does know it's definitely not ultra fast command center. And so here's the response. Look at this. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. See, there's the wall off. Can't see it, but there's no expansion here. And so, quite a few drones get made. An overlord gets started. Like, a bunch of expensive stuff goes down. And, like, quite a ways later, at like 17-ish, an extractor goes down. Now, why is this so important? We're going to see why almost immediately. Creep Colony goes down, man. Creep Colony consumes the drone, and it costs 75 minerals, and it's another 50 minerals to morph to a sunken. That's expensive early game. So... What do we do? We just get our gas later, so we mine a few more minerals before we start getting gas. And lo and behold, the drone manages to slip its way in. And let's see how Hero answers. We're going to see another opening where Zerg isn't quite sure what Terran is doing, just in case you're overly worried about uh, scouting and stuff like that. First, 100 gas. Oh, Zerg now knows it's you know some obnoxious vulture stuff. First hundred gas, boom, layer, no change, nothing at all. But what do we do with our next hundred gas? We're not getting speed. We're getting a hydralisk den right away. And we ain't never getting Zergling speed in the early game. Zergling speed's amazing against Marines. Is this guy building Marines? No. He's building Wraiths. Do speed Zerglings help against Wraiths? No. Do speed Zerglings help against dropships? No. Do speed Zerglings help against speed vultures? No. They don't. So we're not upgrading it right now, because it's not going to do anything. Beautiful opening here. Remember what the timing was for the second gas? It was right around 22 to 25-ish supply at the second base. Zero's getting that as late as possible. And now, Zero's built all these drones... Once the Hydralisk Den's done, he starts to get some more Hydras up. He's going to get five or six of them. He's going to build some defenses at the extremities. Look at the defense here. Locked down tight. Oh, that's so great. No Vulture Wraith pressure can hit us there. Other Overlords are trying to hide themselves. The other ones are going to stay cloistered and protected by the Hydralisks. It's just excellent. And what do we see getting built? You can see it in the production tab. I think in the video I'll show it in a moment. Boom! Spire! 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 Okay. Zero is returning back to normal Zerg. Because in the mid-game, Zerg wants to get Mutalisks, harass Terran, get a third, get Lurkers, and then get Defilers. What's with all the questions? You see in all these games a theme coming up again and again. Zerg doesn't have huge flexibility with which to um, dictate the pace of the match. That's really what Terran's doing. Gosh, look at this most ownage defense ever. Zerg will have a variety of threats to deal with, but if you're Zerg, you just calmly do a thin defense and return right back to normal, man. Return right back to normal. It was gorgeous, gorgeous defense. Oh my gosh. I mean, I mean, mashed him into jelly, man. That was awesome. And look at the money. Ah, yes. Not quite nine mutils can be built, but eight. Feeling great. What is happening over in Flash's base? He has three marines total, and he's almost done with two turrets. 
right? Like, if you do these openings as Terran, you just do not have shit when the Mutalisks arrive. Oh, you'll be able to begin your first science vessel. Oh, right? It's just not that intimidating. Let's look at um, another way to deal with this kind of pressure on a different map. This is uh, Hero, not Zero. This is Hero for once, up against Light, one of the greatest attacking players ever. Light is going to be doing the ultra aggro um, dropship with Wraith pressure. Hero does 12 hatch as his opening build. He will follow that promptly with an 11 pool. You see the Overlord Scout on the minimap. Uh, you see the Drone Scout on the minimap. Drone doesn't see anything up there. Drone is still scouting. So Hero doesn't really know. Hero doesn't really know what's coming up. So Hero's just doing the usual thing. Doing the usual thing. Yeah, seems good. Boom. Hatchery going down. Okay, so the hatchery's coming up. Third hatch. Cool. What's happening here? Ah, yes. Look, it's a very fast factory. It's a very fast factory coming out of light. Uh, no expansion. Come on, Sean. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Remember how I talked about the most easily messed up part of the game? A newbie thinks, oh, dude, I need to know if he's going factory or two barracks or three barracks or one barracks fast engineering bay or one barracks early expand or two port wraith there's all these like i need to scout the specific thing but watch 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 remember how i said this is the most easily messed up part of the game right now zerg has seen with an overlord there's not an expansion not an expansion he has seen scouted this there's not an expansion the drone has gone here has scouted not an expansion so there's no expansion. We don't know where Terran is. He's almost certainly in the bottom left, unless we got real unlucky with the top left scout. So what's Zerg going to do? Zerg is not going to rush to build a geyser, as you would do versus an ultra-fast expansion. No, no, no. Nopity, nopity, dopity, dopity. Just building whole bunch of drones and look at how late this extractor is this is like 16 extractor this is late it just delays it Whoa, oh look 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 at the mini map look at the mini map zerg can't even see into the terran base zerg can't even see what the hell is terran doing he just knows that terran doesn't have an expansion he knows the terran doesn't have an expansion beautiful 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 Okay, so with the first 100 gas, what do you think Hero's going to do? If you said he's going to take a layer, you're correct. Because Zerg openings don't really vary that much. It's really in the details of staying alive that things become tough. All right, so, oh, sees an expansion. Good. Now, if you're Zerg and you didn't see an expansion and continue to not see one, you just keep building sunken colonies because that Terran's one failed attack away from the game being over. First 100 gas, boom, a layer. Next set of gas, Hydroden. Still don't really know. I mean, the, the Terran could conceivably be going for some weird vulture into marine nonsense. You know what we would do with our Hydralisk Den then? Like nothing. And then we just go Mutalisks and say, oh, okay, you did a bad fast command center opening, so we're fine. Light's being a cheeky feller. This is a... a incredibly sly move that hero does he just goes oh you know i'll just i'll just float into your base man i'll just take that overlord and reworm it all the way back in because if you're cutting marines to go for factory stuffs i'll just sneak in and spot but it's not like hero had to scout that hero just automatically built the hydralisk den automatically built the fast layer automatically delayed this and what Hero does here, though, is something that I just think sucks. I do not like this. He goes for range on Hydras. Then he's going to get the Overlord speed, which you see. He's getting the Spire, which is a trick. He's not going to use it. He's going to do a Hydralisk all-in. I'm actually going to speed this thing up a little bit. Uh, do note, though, that 
you don't have to do this all in. I am showing this for the defense. I'm showing this for the defense. This Wraith can't do anything. I love this sped up music, man. Don't those vultures seem painfully late? Don't they seem painfully late to you? That's how a good defense looks for Zerg. But I will rewound to the start of the game. Look at this. Barracks, refinery, instant factory, instant starport. When the starport's done, instant wraith. When the wraith is done, instant add-on, instant dropship. Dropship comes out, heads right over here to the vultures, loads them directly on in to this drop that we just saw, and it looked so flimsy. I mean, this looks like pathetically late. That's gained by virtue of the swift hydralisk den, the delayed gas, and all the other good stuffs. And then hydralisk speed is done, overlord speed is done, and we're gonna try to win, which is really hard because Terran can repair. And we didn't need to do this attack. We didn't need to do this. That did wind up technically kind of positive for Hero because he killed off a lot of SCVs, as you saw. But I want to discourage you from doing like this sort of answer. It's real common for any player of any race, Zerg, Terran, or Protoss, to be flustered by aggression and try to counter all in. Like, oh my gosh, the raids are messing with me, the hide, oh my god, and you took an expansion too. Oh, jeez, man, you have everything. I gotta kill you right now. Play calmly. Defend calmly. There's one last thing that I want to note, which is technically a choice. Who on earth... Oh, this is zero versus last. So you've seen zero versus flash. <laughs> seen last versus other zergs. This is zero versus last. One technically choice that you can make as Zerg, we still see 12 hatch, 11 pool, 13 hatch, 12 gas. We still see the usual um, components to the opening. But Zerg technically does have this choice of instead of going for a uh, spire and getting mutalisks, you can skip the mutalisks and go straight for lurkers. This is one potential mid game choice that you have. Let me note the differences. First of all, you are much safer versus a variety of marine-based play. You will always see a Zerg player, and you always should as a Zerg player, you should always build both the Hydralisk Den and the Spire if you're trying to go for Lurkers. Because Mutalisks are so common that you'll force your Terran opponent to build a bunch of turrets needlessly. And you need the Spire for Scourge anyways. And you're not sacrificing that much. So you really need to get both of those. But um, anyways, you're going to get both of those. But you're focusing on Lurker. What What's the output of that? What changes? You don't have a lot of harassment methods. You don't have a lot of ways to scout. You don't have a lot of ways to pick off Marines. You don't have... Uh, a lot of what Mutalisk gives you. You don't have things that deny drops, but you do have super sturdy defense to take a third. And super sturdy defense at the front. This game is going to showcase a little bit of that, and everything else is functionally the same. What are, what are you trying to do next as Zerg? You're trying to get a third. You're trying to get defilers. Same old, same old, right? So here we see some lurkers morphing in the main base for defense. We see three lurkers morphing here for defense at the third. We see a sneaky drone trying to run around here to get to the expansion. But last is the second best Terran in the world for a reason. He just he just goes over here because <laughs> it should be mutilists right now. We ain't seeing it. Oh, he sees lurkers. All right, I guess I'll just try to intercept. And he just kills the drone. Oh man, oh jeez. Now getting your third delayed and messed with is actually really common in this matchup. If you're a Zerg player, don't fret. You don't desperately need to get that down instantly. In fact, I would say it happens only like 50% of the time that you get that guaranteed third um, ultra fast. But notice how hard it is 
to advance on Marines with Lurkers. This is some of the struggle with opening Lurkers. In fact, you need Zerglings to go along with your Lurkers. What did you hear me say a million billion times in the very first video we saw? Zerg just wants to build drones. You want to build drones, you want to build drones, you want to build drones, you want to build drones. And instead, you had to build Zerglings, you had to build Zerglings, you had to build Zerglings. So you kind of weirdly eat into your drone count uh, some by uh, going with these Lurkerling openings. But notice that Zero's actually in a pretty comfortable position. He's got Lurkers at the front, he's got Lurkers at the back, his hive's almost done, he's getting in... Uh, evolution chamber. Good Terrans will note though that, oh hey, you have absolutely no way to deal with drops easily. So as long as I don't just randomly throw a drop at you, I actually try to pressure and set up a drop, should be in good shape. Defiler mound coming down, oh yeah. There's a Nidus canal going down, oh yeah. There's the drop. I didn't show it from the best angle, but that's fine. Just Photoshop a better angle in. And this can be super annoying because Mutilus can wiggle and worm their way around the Marines and pick off all sorts of stuff. But you have to advance on this with Lurkers. You can lose them. Look at this slow, slow, obnoxious push. Lost a spawning pool. This is still not really that horrible for Zero. But I want you to just look at the supply. 100 supply to 60 with zero pressure on the Terran base because of no mutilisks. You're kind of letting Terran explode. So any little damage you're taking is sort of magnified by virtue of the fact that Terran is, is, is getting to do exactly what he wants. And you can't really pressure this at all. And if you are even slightly delayed with your defilers, this happens. So, uh, I, I'm actually, I mean, I, I, I shouldn't rag on this too much. I'm actually someone that kind of likes going for Lurker openings. I think they're pretty fun, especially if I'm having lag uh, or, <laughs> or quite frankly, if I'm just tired of messing up my Mutalist Micro that day. I think these are really fantastic. But I want you to see the concerns as a Zerg player. They are not subtle little, you know, like, oh yeah, just put a lurker here and a lurker there and boom, solved. You have to do a lot of careful tactical positioning because if you don't, you literally just will fall apart. Because while Terran is working his way back this way, a drop is going to head into the main base in like two seconds. There it is. I completely miss it. GG's called, zero leaves the game, and I have to regain vision of Terran just to show that this drop's coming in. Um... So just be careful. Just be careful if you're Zerg. So to summarize, I want to come back to uh, this little chart here of early game. You can maybe nine pool. You can maybe do some Zergling speed, but you really got to focus on droning and building up. Late early game is primarily about mutilist positioning, defense. Um, oh, 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 yeah. Mutilist positioning and defense, getting the third up. This is really the tricky one until you can get those defilers up. And you need to carefully read what the Terran is doing. And if there's really two simple takeaways, what I would say is, if your Zerg makes sure you are scouting if he is or isn't expanding, right around the time you wanna build your geyser. If he is expanding, you wanna geyser right away. If he's not expanding, delay it a little bit. Consider getting a few Hydras, that'll help a lot. That's super important. And the second thing that I want you to remember is it's important to build a lot of drones kind of all the way up, all the way deep into this mid game. Drones, drony, 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 and defendy, 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 defendy. I think those are the big two, uh, big two things that I wanna highlight for you. So I hope that this was a fun and educational uh, series of videos. I was really pleased with the stuff I was able to get, but um, I wanna stress, as I did in the Terran vs. Zerg videos, now that we're at the end, I want to stress to you, if you are up against a Terran who just doesn't seem to be expanding, build more Sunkins at your front, don't even worry about taking that third, and just chill and build up a big-ass Mutaling and then Mutaling Lurker army, and then go for Defiler and then do all those things. Just defend. 
Taryn is one failed attack away from losing the entire game. On Thursday, we're going to have a pretty short episode because it's Thanksgiving, and I'm spending the morning doing some volunteer work, so I will have zero time in order to do the uh, long-term preparation. But we're going to talk about some generalized concepts on Thursday, some worker micro tricks and some large-scale army control, and that might just be an hour, hour and a half or so of content. Um, and then next week, we're just going to continue to do some Let's Learn StarCraft, but I'll remind you that I will be gone on the 30th, which is... Not this Thursday, but the following Thursday, because I'm flying down to L.A. Because it's the Zotac Cup Finals. A Brood War Finals. That's right. Casted by me, Tasteless, Artosis, and In Control. And I'll be plugging the shit out of that all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're done, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Practice those build orders, man.